All right, so once we have our rate laws, everything's good, but sometimes we have to figure out the rate laws. And it's kind of hard sometimes to actually measure the rates. So oftentimes what we will measure instead is going to be the concentration, right? So concentration versus time is going to tell us a lot about our uh, reactions, okay? So we can actually graph our concentration versus time and try and identify our different uh, reaction orders, okay? So if we have just a graph and we would put time on the bottom because we're gonna have a reaction occurring and the concentration of some species, right? Concentration of A. And if I end up with a linear change, right? No matter what that concentration is, right, our, our uh, concentration is going down as time changes, right, the reaction proceeds, that's going to indicate that my reaction is zero order, okay, right? But if I have something that is curved instead, right, if I've got a curved graph, then I don't actually know as much about uh, what's happening with this uh, reaction, okay? But if, right, we decide that this reaction is zero order because our concentration versus time graph is linear, the slope of this graph would actually not be, right, it, or yeah, it could be that way. Um, the slope of our graph is going to be equal to k, all right? Um, but if we have a first order reaction, right, now we have... Uh, the change in the concentration over the change in time. And then what we can actually do is we can take this up here and we can integrate it, okay? So when, when we integrate it, right, remember we, if we know our calculus, calculus we can integrate this. Um, we would separate delta T over to the other side, delta A. We would integrate over of uh, concentrations and integrate over time. What we're going to end up is with an integrated rate law, okay? So the integrated rate laws are actually what are on our equation sheets, okay? So the integrated rate law for our uh, first order reaction is going to be ln of A minus ln of A naught equals the rate. Let me make sure that I get this right. I don't, or, oh, equals KT. Okay. And I actually did flip this around, so it should be ln, of, ln A naught of minus ln of A is equal to KT. So this is our integrated rate law for our first order reactions. Okay. So instead here, I don't really want to actually uh, plot the concentration of A versus time because that's not going to give me a linear graph. Instead, if I graph time versus the natural log of the concentration, now I should see a linear graph. Okay? So now I should see a linear graph where uh, I can actually measure what is happening here. Okay? Um, so if I were to plot the natural log of A versus time, and that is linear, that is going to indicate that my reaction is first order with respect to A. All right? The last piece is if we take a second order reaction. Okay? So um, let me make sure that I get this uh, right here. Um, I want to get my... There we go. Um, so for our zero order, right, we're going to have concentration of A equals concentration of A naught minus KT. So our uh, integrated rate law for zero order is right there. For our second order, the integrated rate law is 1 over concentration of A minus 1 over 
the concentration of A naught is equal to KT. All right? So now, rather than the natural log of A, if I wanted to get a linear graph, I would need to plot time versus 1 over the concentration of A. All right? So my integrated rate laws are second order, first order, and zero order. And if I wanted a linear graph for a zero order, I would have to do concentration versus time. If I wanted a linear graph of a first order reaction, it's gonna be the natural log of A versus time. And if I want a linear graph of a second order reaction, it's gonna be one over A versus time, okay? And so then this, should be linear like that, okay? Um, so we have integrated rate laws. We have the graph, graphical representations of these. The graphical representations, this is not a first order uh, graph. This is a graph that indicates that my reaction is first order, right? If I have a, a linear graph of natural log of A versus time, if that ends up linear, that indicates that my reaction is going to be first order, okay? Um, the last piece that I do want to get to here is actually over on the next page, but it has to do with half-life, okay? So let's think back to our first order reaction. First order reaction what we end up having, having is that um, we, we see that we can lose half of our uh, molecules, half of our concentration in the same unit of time. And so the half-life is the time required for half of our molecules or half of a reactant to decompose by a first order reaction. Okay, and this will be constant if we have a first order reaction. So if I lose half of my molecules in eight seconds, in another eight seconds, I'm going to lose half again. So half and then half, I'm going to have one quarter left there, okay? And we can actually use this property to, to realize that our reaction is going to be first order, right? So if we went back to our concentration versus time, right, maybe it's not linear, right? If it were linear, it would be zero order. But if it is not linear and in eight seconds I'm down to half, right? So maybe that's half there, that's my eight seconds, right? In the next eight seconds, I'm gonna be down to a quarter, right? And then the next eight seconds, I'm going to be down to an eighth, okay? So I can actually use this same graph as the zero order reaction if I can read that graph, I can identify this as a first order reaction because I lose the same half amount, right? I lose half of my reactant uh, in the same time period, okay? So this is why I say that this is not a react, or this is not a zero order graph. This is a graph that currently indicates that our reactant is zero order, okay? So that's about half of our uh, information for this unit. You should be able to do a bunch of homework problems.